Hey guys, today I'm gonna do the classics tag, which I've wanted to do for a long time. Everyone and their dog has already done this on booktube, so I tag myself. Question number one is name an overhyped classic you really didn't like. The Great Gatsby. Uh, I mean, I didn't hate this, but I just remember finishing it and being like, that was The Great Gatsby? Like, that was what I had to read before I died? Like, it was all right, but... Ugh. Just in case I haven't jeopardized my American citizenship enough by admitting that, I'll also admit that my 14-year-old self thought To Kill a Mockingbird was overrated. Now, I don't know if I'd still agree with her. Um, I haven't reread it since, but she had strong feelings to that effect. Question two is what is your favorite time period to read about? I love the 19th century, especially the Victorian women writers. Eliot, the Brontes, Gaskell. I'm such a fangirl when it comes to them. Three is your favorite fairy tale. I always loved uh, The Snow Queen by Hans Christian Andersen. It starts with the devil in the form of a troll who has a magic mirror that ignores the beauty in things and magnifies what's ugly in them. And then one day um, the troll and his helpers try to fly to heaven to hold the mirror up to God, but they drop it and it shatters and splinters into a billion pieces into the eyes and hearts of people all over the world. Uh, and, and when I was younger, I had this beautiful illustrated version of it and um, the pictures in it were just so like eerie and mesmerizing and it was the kind of thing where I would tell myself like don't look at it before you go to sleep like don't look at it and then of course I'd look at it and have nightmares. Question four is what is the classic you're most embarrassed about having not read? Um, I'd only be embarrassed in very specific contexts with people who have read a lot of classics. Um, so for example once I've told people that I love the Victorian period, it can then be embarrassing to admit to another person who loves the Victorians that I've never read any Anthony Trollope. Um, sometimes I feel a little basic around people who've read a lot of Shakespeare because I've only read a handful of his most famous plays. Um, but if we're talking generally, the big one that I haven't read yet and am going to next year is The Iliad. Number five, appropriately, is top five classics you would like to read soon. Um, so I have The Essential Writings of Ralph Waldo Emerson, which I recently hauled, uh, The Sufferings of Prince Steinerhoch, which is a novel by the Czech writer Ladislav Klima, who apparently was a nut job, um, Dream Story, a novella by the 19th century Austrian writer Arthur Schnitzler, I want to reread The Oedipus Cycle of Plays by Sophocles, and Mansfield Park by Jane Austen, because um, it's her only novel that I have left. Number six is your favorite modern book or series based on a classic, and this one is a modern classic in its own right, I, Claudius by Robert Graves. I'm kind of cheating on this one because this isn't based on a classic book, but, but it is based on a classic life. Um, so this is the autobiography of Tiberius Claudius, who was a member of the royal family in in Rome in the first century AD, um, but he was shunned growing up because he was a weakling and had a stutter. So he became a scholar and a historian, and this follows the intrigues of the Roman royal family up to the point when Claudius unexpectedly becomes the emperor of Rome. This is really detailed and has a formal scholarly tone, but the characters are amazing. Lavinia is one of the best villains ever, and I love me a female antagonist. Um, and uh, the plot points in this book are bananas. Like, they're bananas before you even get to Caligula near the end. And you'd have to read it to appreciate what that means. So I definitely recommend this one. Number seven is your favorite movie version or TV series based on a classic Lord of the Rings. I'm obsessed. Like, duh. Um, mostly because I think the casting in those movies, even down to the little side characters, is perfection. Um, and Viggo Mortensen wasn't their first choice for Aragorn, and sometimes I have nightmares that they cast someone like Brad Pitt in that role, and ugh, it's just like terrible nightmares. In terms of TV, I have the typical answer for this, which is that I love BBC miniseries, especially of 19th century novels. So Pride and Prejudice, Jane Eyre, except the kissing in that version is terrible, but like the rest of it is great. Um, North and South, Richard Armitage's bass murmuring, like, single-handedly started puberty for me. Uh, Wives and Daughters, too. Gaskell gets really good treatment from the BBC. 
Um, so in general, I just think that the mini series format is the best for books because it can really recreate the detail and, and the feeling of being in a book for hours. And the companion question, number eight, um, the worst classic to movie adaptation, uh, the old version of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. The animation is hilarious, um, and Lucy in that version just has teeth to make beavers envious, and she's just up in the screen the whole time being like, I got to go see Mr. Tonish. Also the Kira Knightley version of Anna Karenina, like, the whole thing is preposterous, but especially the actor who plays Vronsky is just like, remove yourself. Question nine is about editions of classics that I want to collect more of, and there are two main ones I thought of. One is Penguin Deluxe Classics Editions. So I have um, The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter, which I just got for my birthday. Uh, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Middlemarch by George Eliot and um, Anna Karenina by Lev Tolstoy. And these are all just really, really nicely put together. They have these French flaps and deckled edges and, and just beautiful illustrations. So Penguin Deluxe is a good way to go. And then I also collect um, the Modern Library classics, <laughs> fallen out of the frame, uh, with these copper spines. So that includes um, the Emerson that I just showed you. You can't even see the titles anymore. Um, I really think that these spines are classy and look great on a bookshelf. Um, Emma by Jane Austen, Crossing to Safety by Wallace Stegner, um, Charlotte Temple by Susanna Rosen, The Let's by Charlotte Bronte, which I've talked about on this channel, um, and The Mill and the Floss by George Eliot, which is my favorite book. Number 10 is an underhyped classic that you'd recommend everyone. Uh, you had to know I was going to cheat on this and not just mention one. So of course I have to talk about the novella Fräulein Elsa by Arthur Schnitzler because it's one of my favorite books and if you want to know why I'll link the video where I talk about that down below. Another one that I've mentioned before in this channel is La Regenta by Leopoldo Alas and um, this is like the Spanish version of Ana Karenina but so much funnier. Um, and it also subverts the 19th century trope of the adulteress who's a really bad mother because the adulteress in here, um, Doña Ana, doesn't have any children, but she does have three men who all fail at being father figures for her. So that's refreshing. The last book to mention isn't underhyped at all in the way the question means. It would be ludicrous to say that about this book, but it's underhyped in a way in that people aren't excited to read it. Um, so it's Don Quixote by Cervantes. People feel like they should read this because it's considered the first novel, but it's huge and episodic, um, has two separate volumes to it, and nobody likes reading mostly out of obligation. But I love this book, um, not because I think I'm supposed to, not because it makes me feel smart to say that. It was one of the best reading experiences of my life. It's just unbelievably good and so entertaining. So I might make a video um, with advice I have for anyone who wants to try reading Don Quixote. Let me know if you'd be interested in that kind of thing. That's everything. Please let me know your responses to any of these questions down below. Um, I don't know how soon I'll be seeing you because this is the last of the videos that I'm pre-filming before I go on vacation and this is the last one that I'm going to upload. So um, you will be seeing my face sometime in the next week, hopefully. Not that you'll be like sitting at the computer waiting for it, but just so you know. Anyway, bye guys and thanks for watching.